Coming up, a recap of Loyola games you may have missed. And who's your greatest of all time athlete? Stick around to find out some of ours. Plus, an inside look at the men's basketball season schedule. I'm Vanessa Hoxa. And I'm Adriana Demos. All this and so much more. Rambler Sports Locker begins now. We open with big news out of Chicago sports this week. Former Chicago Bull Derrick Rose announced his retirement Thursday morning after 15 seasons in the NBA and seven with the Bulls. The Bulls selected the Chicago native with the first overall pick in the 2008 draft. And in 2011, he became the youngest player ever to be named the league's MVP at 22. Though injuries plagued his later seasons with the Bulls, D. Rose will always be remembered for how his electric highlight reel type play revitalized Bulls basketball. Turning our attention to the gridiron, the Bears lost to the Indianapolis Colts last Sunday 21-16. Caleb Williams set career highs in passing categories with 52 attempts, 33 completions, and 363 yards. The rookie also threw his first two NFL touchdown passes. With the loss, the Bears fell to 1-2. and two. They'll return home this Sunday to host the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah, just a tough start for the Bears overall. I know Chicago fans were really excited for Caleb Williams to join the team, and then, you know, it wasn't really the performance that we've been wanting to see, but I'm hopeful for the Bears and Caleb Williams. So hopefully we can get this offense going back at Soldier Field, Adriana. Well, talking about Chicago sports really has me excited to hear more about our own Ramblers. Yeah, there has been a lot going on in Loyola Athletics right now. Men's basketball just released their season schedule this week, which our reporter will talk about later in the show. And men's soccer is back at Hoyne Field. Rachel Lieberman has more with the Rambler Rundown. Welcome back to another edition of the Rambler Rundown. The men's soccer team opened up Atlantic 10 play at home last Saturday, hosting Dayton. The Ramblers drew with the Flyers 2-2. The Ramblers geared up for the classic red line rivalry on Tuesday night, where they hosted DePaul. Loyola lost the match 3-1. The Ramblers will travel to St. Louis this weekend to take on the Billikens Saturday night. Women's volleyball faced DePaul on Saturday. The Ramblers took the win in four sets, this win closed Loyola's non-conference play, ending the stretch 5-6. and six. Loyola will host the Davidson Wildcats this weekend. Friday's night game will be at 6 p.m. and Saturday's will be at 2 p.m. The Ramblers then take on St. Louis next Tuesday. The men's and women's cross-country teams both finished second at the Notre Dame Catholic Championships last Friday. They'll be back in action next Friday, October 4th, to host the 45th Sean Earl Loyola Lakefront Invitational. Loyola's women's soccer team Closed out the weekend traveling to New York to take on Fordham. The game ended in a 2-2 tie, and they'll take on St. Louis tonight on the road and LaSalle back at home on Sunday. The men's golf team traveled to Des Moines on Monday for the Zach Johnson Invitational. Rounds 1 and 2 took place on Monday with round 3 play continuing on Tuesday. Loyola tied with DePaul for 5th. The men don't play until October 7th at the throwdown up top in Homer, Nebraska while the women head to Indianapolis for the Butler Invitational on Monday. That wraps up this week's edition of The Rundown. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Rachel Lieberman. Thanks, Rachel. Some exciting games coming up for the Ramblers. Now, Athletic Director Steve Watson is being recognized for his outstanding work. Natalie King has more on the story. Loyola's Athletic Director Steve Watson recently received a high academic honor by the university. On Sunday, Watson was inducted as an honorary member of Alpha Sigma Nu, the Honor Society of Jesuit Universities. Membership into this honor society is the highest honor given by Jesuit universities around the world. Watson was selected as an inductee not only for his loyalty and service to the athletics department, but also the sense of scholarship that he instills in his athletes. Under Watson's leadership, Loyola was named the top school in the nation for athlete graduation success rates in 2017 and 2018, has received multiple NCAA awards for outstanding academic progress, and has produced over 10 academic All-American athletes. 
Watson says his academic success starts with the recruiting process for Loyola athletes. Our coaches are always recruiting um, high school prospects that, that are, are coming in and, and are motivated to do well in the classroom. Uh, and, and not just to graduate, but to but to achieve at the highest level in the classroom. And, and that's why we've had such success. Watson also attributed the strong scholarship of Loyola student athletes to the athletic department's academic counselors and the guidance of Loyola professors. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Natalie King. And speaking of exciting things happening in the athletics department, here's Kirsten Richardson talking about the men's basketball schedule release. The Loyola men's basketball schedule was released earlier this week and it did not disappoint. The first game of the season will be an exhibition against Calumet St. Joseph on October 29th at the Gentile Arena. On December 15th, they face San Francisco, Milwaukee, Wisconsin in the Pfizer Forum, with the arena where the Milwaukee Bucks play in. During the holidays, the Ramblers will head to Honolulu, Hawaii for the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Their first game of the tournament will be against the Oakland Golden Grizzlies on December 22nd. For the second half of the season, they will compete against the A-10. The first game for them will be against VCU on January 4th at Gentile. Other notable games to look out for are St. Bonaventure on February 4th, who defeated the Ramblers at the A-10 Conference, and the Richmond Spiders on February 11th, who share the regular season title with Loyola. Televised games on ESPN will be two home games where the Ramblers face St. Louis on February 14th and Dayton on February 21st. It's going to be an exciting season for the Ramblers, and we can't wait to give you some of the action. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Kirsten Richardson. Well, it sounds like it's going to be an amazing season for the reigning A-10 champs, and I personally can't wait for that St. Bonaventure rematch. Thanks, Kirsten. Well, it also is looking like an exciting season for the girls' volleyball team. Welcome to another season of New Blurs on the Block, a segment that highlights rookie or transfer athletes at Loyola who've had notable performances, outstanding sportsmanship, or just honorable mentions. This New Blur has already started her volleyball career on a high note after being recognized for the Atlantic 10's Defensive Player of the Week, not once, everyone, but twice. Jay Fitting, remember the name, the 5'7 libero out of Cedarburg, Wisconsin, earned her first weekly honors award in the opening week of the season. Fitting then earned her second honor last week for her outstanding performance in the Loyola Invitational. Fitting now totals 170 digs, 45 assists, and 14 service aces during her time here at Loyola per Loyola Athletics. Fitting joined Loyola with some impressive stats under her belt already. The runner-up champs had to deal with some changes this season as the team said bye to former libero Grace Hinchman, a key player for Loyola's defense. Fitting had some pretty big shoes to fill, but I think she fits into the team just perfectly. You can watch this new blur tonight at 6 p.m. in Gentile Arena against Davidson for Chicago Night. I'm looking forward to see another goaded performance from Fitting tonight. Now, speaking of the goats, Caroline Lingen fills in for Oliver Allen on the Ramble to discuss the greatest of all times. Welcome back to the Ramble. I'm Caroline Lingen, and today I'm joined by Rachel Lieberman and Brendan Wolak. Today we're discussing the goats of football, hockey, basketball, and of course, our own Ramblers. We're doing it in a bit of a different format today. As you can see, we're not behind a desk. We're in front of a whiteboard. Today we're doing it as a pop quiz in a way. We're doing it point systems, guys, okay? So we're getting in the debate. I wanna hear the best answers you have, and I'll decide whose I like better. Audience participation is included for those of you at home as well. Give it a like, give it a comment, give it a subscribe. We are going to start with the GOAT of football. Rachel, I'll start with you. Who is the GOAT, okay? GOAT <laughs> of all football. The GOAT, hands down, is Tom Brady. Mm. No brainer, no yeah. brainer, has the most rings. He is Tom Brady. Do not even need to explain. Mm, he is. He is tall as well, too. Yes. So <laughs> that could help out. That could be a thing, too. Brandon, let's hear your side. I'm going to have to go with Jerry Rice, the greatest receiver wow. of all time. Whoa. Whoa. San Francisco 49ers legend. 
2,000 yard in a season receiver. Brady may have the Super Bowls, mm. but Rice has the athleticism to make him the greatest. Mm, he does. He seems to work a little bit harder too, I'll say. Okay, so um, despite any controversy on Tom Brady, whatever it is, deflate gate, put it all to the side. Tom mm. Brady is Tom Brady. Mm. All you need to say. If you hear the GOAT, you think of Tom Brady. Mm. Yeah, you know what? The GOAT is Tom Brady. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But I'm going to give that point to Brandon. Whoa. Yeah, Whoa. I know. Thank you. Thank I you. know. Thank you. We got a bigger, I, I think we had a little bit more controversy, if you will, with that one. So we'll hear it out. You got to work your way back up now, Miss Rachel. Try your best. The public, then public agrees with me. <laughs> the public <laughs> may agree with you. I do not. So <laughs> tough life. We're going to move on to the GOAT of basketball. Now I know. We were talking a little bit before this. We were debating. We were hearing each other out. Let's hear it. Brandon, GOAT of basketball. As a Chicagoan, it pains me to say this, but it has to be LeBron James. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> hear me out. Hear me out. Popular. Four championships, 10 finals appearances, three different teams. When you're able to do that with as many teams as LeBron has, mm. not to mention he's the all-time leading scorer now as of last season, that's enough said for me. Yeah, he is also tall, so he that's is another tall. part. I'm feeling they this. all are tall. I'm feeling, <laughs> well, that could be a part of being a goat. <laughs> could be a part of it, Rachel. Um, I will say Michael Jordan. Mm. Michael Jordan <laughs> is the face of basketball. Mm. He changed the game. He is Michael Jordan. That will be my argument for the night. Yeah. Tom Brady is Tom Brady. Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan. Oh, wow, we're throwing they it back. They are the gate, the goats. <laughs> the gates. They are the goats. Um, Michael Jordan, no matter what anyone says, Kobe, Michael Jordan, mm. LeBron. Kobe. Michael Jordan always comes out on top. I would mm. put Kobe above LeBron. LeBron okay. would be third. Yeah. Wow. That's a shot. Wow, but that is a shot. Michael Jordan wow. will and is always number one. Wow. As okay. a Bulls fan, and if anyone's not a Bulls fan, you need to know he is the GOAT. My dad's not a Bulls fan. He hated Michael Jordan growing up, oh. but he agrees. Wow. He is the GOAT. That's, that's crazy. Well, you got anything to say to that? You cannot deny legacy. 6-0 and in the finals for Jordan. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. LeBron's longevity, I think, is also a very big piece to why he's the greatest. For a long time. It's over tw going into 20, 21 years in the league now. Mm. Jordan could have played longer, should have played longer. Some things in there um, took a two-year break to play baseball. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's a double sport athlete. That, well, that's a whole other debate for another day. Different day. But overall, LeBron's longevity also propels him into that number mm. one spot for I me. do see the longevity. I just... Off the court, I would say LeBron is a better goat of a person, Human? yes. But Michael Jordan on the court is the basketball goat. I don't care longevity, he won the most. He is a basketball legend. Wow, wow. Well, you know what, guys? That was a good, good fought battle. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, Rachel gets that point. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> we are all tied up. We got two more questions to go. Here we go. Goat of hockey. Rachel? Wayne Gretzky. Wow. Two words, Wayne Gretzky. Straight in. <laughs> Straight, Straight in. in. It is Wayne Gretzky. Leads the league in goals. Mm. He is, again, my argument, Wayne Gretzky. Mm. It's almost <laughs> a verb. Yes. You Gretzky. It is. Yeah. You, you just got Gretzky. <laughs> That's a verb. Yes. That could also, he's also tall. Brandon? With a nickname like the Great One, it is hard to fight mm -hmm. against that being the best. However, I think there might be a greatest one. Mario Lemieux played in the same wow. era as Gretzky. Wow. wow. Not only did he wow. play in the same era, he played through, he played through Hodgkin's lymphoma, mm. came back after 22 games after his treatment, um, fought through back injuries through the entirety of his career, chronic back pains, mm. came out of retirement twice, and became the owner of the Pittsburgh Penguins in order to save the franchise from moving. Yes, he did. And who did he draft to save the, the, the team? Sidney Crosby. Oh, he, there we go. He followed the he legacy. There we go. <laughs> That's crazy. And another, another verb, if you will. You just got Crosby. <laughs> yeah. So it's a crazy one, too. Anything to say in rebuttal? Um, good points. Mm. Good points. I do still think Wayne Gretzky is the face of hockey when you look at its history. Mm. Again, Gretzky, he is Wayne Gretzky, mm -hmm. but 
there are some great accomplishments that Well, Brandon it sounds mentioned. like you've turned over and just laid down the sword. So I'm going to go ahead and give that one to Brandon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Turn it out. That's how we do it. All right. All right. Well, here we go. Now we're down to our final question. So whoever wins this one wins it all. That's not true. Whoever wins <laughs> this one, we either have a winner with Brandon or we got a tie with Rachel, which in that case will go to lightning round. So stay tuned. We'll let you know. Final goat question. Who is the goat of Rambler Athletics? All right. I feel like we're prepared. Brandon, I'll start with you. For me, we're going all way back in time here. Back okay. to 1963. Oh, mm, oh, we know 63. what happened in 63. Yep. National champion, Jerry Harkness. Oh, wow. Captain wow. of that Loyola men's basketball team that won the national championship. What would current day be? the current NCAA AA mm -hmm. tournament, March yep. Madness. Before it was called that, overall, broke, was a civil rights activist along with that. Yeah. Broke color barriers in mm -hmm. NCAA um, and was part of the overall, one of the greatest team in Loyola basketball history. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the Final Four 2018 team. Great team overall, Shout so out. close to getting it, getting it done. But the 1963 team was the team to get it done. Mm. Okay, so if I'm hearing you right, you're saying the whole team is our goat of Rambler. I, I think that's fair to say. Okay, I like it. A Interesting. group, if you will. A, a group goat. Interesting. Interesting take, Rachel. Um, I beg to differ. Okay. I'm looking more recent, 2018, with um, Cameron Crutwig mm. and Clayton Custard. They were the goats. They led us to the final four. Cinderella story. We all know what happened. We weren't here, but we all know. I remember sitting there watching it. They are the Loyola Goats. Mm -hmm. 1963, they did win. Paved the way. If yes, you will. they did. The game was a bit different back then. The tournament was different. There weren't as many teams. Mm. But it was 1963. It so was. That was a while ago. But um, I do think I disagree. I think yeah. the two I mentioned are the Goats. Yeah. And good that you disagree because this is a debate section. So it's always good to disagree. Now, I like that we went with teams. I feel like we're missing somebody from this. I feel like there's almost a mascot or our, the face. Sister Jean. Sister, Sister Jean. Jean. Now Sister why? Sister Jean will always be the GOAT. She will always be the GOAT. Now why Why we choose uh, those 2018-1963 teams over Miss our gorgeous Sister Jean? She was there throughout them both. She, she was. She was always there mm. and I feel like her presence is an overpowering goat mm. to all of us. Yes. I agree. Wow. I feel like she was there. I saw her on my TV screen in 2018 during March Madness, but she is just the given goat. Yes. We know she's the goat. Yeah, That's it's not it's, a debate. It's implicit. Yes. Well, of course. And for final tallies, for our final question, good debates from both of you. Moment of truth. I'm sorry, Brandon won. With a three to thank one sweep, Brandon, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Brandon won. Now, Rachel, I'd like to offer a hand of very good job. Thank very you. good. We thank know you for the our... Cavs came back from a three to one lead, so I will be back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they will. And thank you both for joining us on this new segment. I'll throw it back to Vanessa and Adriana. Thanks, everyone. That wraps up this episode of Rambler Sports Locker. To stay up to date on all things Rambler Sports, be sure to follow us on X, TikTok, and Instagram at Loyola RSL and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From all of us here at Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Vanessa Hoxa. And I'm Adriana Demos. We'll see you next week. And as always, don't forget to turn off the lights.